omission is way bigger than commission. There's big opportunities in life have to be seized. Uh, we don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. In fact, I've told students if when they got out of school, they got a punch card with 20 punches on it, and that's all the investment decisions they got to make in their entire life, they would get very rich because they would think very hard about each one. Hey, I'm Stephen, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, we're going through a couple of pearls of wisdom from one of the all-time investing greats, Warren Buffett. I'll be relating these examples to my personal investment in Tesla and some of my professional decisions in terms of my career, and also just trying to drive the point home that you don't need to make a million different investment decisions over your investment career. Just a handful of great ones. So with that said, let's get into the video. And by the way, since I know there's a lot of crypto lovers watching and people who like free stuff, it's your lucky day. For a limited time, you can get up to $250 in free crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. It also helps out the channel. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. Most important thing is to decide, is to be able to define which ones you can come to an intelligent decision on and which ones are beyond your capacity to evaluate. You don't have to be right about thousands and thousands and thousands of companies. You only have to be right about a couple. This is such a great point. So many investors, using the term semi-loosely here, fail to realize, fail to recognize whether or not they're actually able to make an intelligent decision on this particular company, this particular investment. Instead, they get so caught up in this idea that they need to be busy, active, making lots of investment decisions. They've got fear of missing out on a certain opportunity that they're just throwing their money around blindly without having any understanding of whether or not they're capable, even capable of making an intelligent investment decision. An analogy that applies here is the concept of the person who's always busy in their professional life. They're working 10 hours, 12 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours a day, always super busy. Oh man, I'm so busy working crazy hours. They fail to ever pay attention to their actual results. How much value is this person providing to the marketplace? What problems are they solving? What results are they achieving in those hours worked? This kind of busyness can obscure the fact that these people are actually doing almost nothing and providing practically zero value. And by the way, if you work long hours, that doesn't necessarily mean you're not providing much value. But nine times out of 10, this seems to be the case. I'd much rather be the person that works one hour a day, two hours a day, maybe three or four hours a day at most, and produces more than the person slaving away, working three, four times as many hours in a single day. Because this person is focused on the results rather than the process of being busy. This analogy applies with investing decisions as well. I'd much rather be the investor making a few intelligent investment decisions and getting the results than the less than intelligent investor who's just throwing money around the place at 50,000 different things, being super busy as an investor, but achieving poor or suboptimal results. All right, now, coming closer, guys, I'm going to let you in on a little YouTube stock investing guru secret. Now, um, I don't want to be seen to be throwing shade here, but I do want to be honest here. People's feelings, less important than the facts here. You may have seen some prolific stock investing gurus on YouTube producing content about stocks they're buying now, three stocks to buy now, 12 stocks in my portfolio right now, 13 stocks that I'm buying, 10 stocks for noob, these kind of things. I wanna give you guys a little bit of a spoiler alert. These people aren't necessarily out there to give investing tips and share their insight on investing as much as they are there to generate content by talking about a bunch of different companies, using the word stock a million times so they can get high ad rates and just keep the money flowing in from their YouTube business. Now, to be clear, these businesses can be very, very successful, but I just want to give you guys some insight into some of the motivation behind a lot of the investors who appear to be super active in the stock market, always finding new opportunities, always finding new stocks every month. Oh my gosh, I found five great new companies to invest in this month for the first time. 12 new stocks this month. I mean, goodness me, how do I keep coming up with these ideas? The truth is, these aren't great ideas. These are great ways to produce content, talking about stocks, keep people watching, and generate more ad revenue. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. That business model works very well. It's very, very, very lucrative, in fact. Brilliant. You'll see a lot of stock investors in YouTube replicating this exact business model. But I want to be clear. 
Generally speaking, the reason for all of these different stock purchases isn't necessarily because they're great investment decisions, it's to generate content. You might notice that I only talk about one or two companies on this channel, period. This is certainly counterproductive to growing a YouTube channel. Think about this for a moment. How many people care about Tesla stock enough to subscribe to a YouTube channel where the guy only talks about Tesla stock? The fact that I don't cover stocks like, say, Palantir. Why haven't I talked about Palantir once? I get so many people in the comments, hey, Palantir, Palantir, Palantir. I could probably add another 20, 30,000 subs to the channel if I started covering that stock as well. Don't understand it, not as interested in it, not talking about it. You get the picture, right? I personally am sort of almost sabotaging this YouTube channel because instead of talking about 50,000 different stocks every month and saying, oh, I'm buying this and that or this and that and that, I just talk about what I know and understand, making very few investment decisions, but the results speak for themselves. I can all but guarantee you if you take my average returns across my all-in Tesla stock portfolio over the last five or so years and compare them to practically any other stock investing YouTuber out there, I would destroy their returns. Oh, you're so lucky, Stephen. Hmm, I tend to argue that point. I'm not so sure that it's luck as, as good management, you know what I mean? Of course, you could always make the point, oh, well, you know, if you didn't buy Tesla, well, you wouldn't have those returns. But here's the thing, I did buy Tesla. It's practically the only stock I bought for the last five years. Can't really make that argument. The returns speak for themselves across the entire portfolio. A little bit of an insight. I don't have to understand all kinds of business. There's all kinds of business I don't understand. But there's thousands of opportunities there. I did understand the Bank of America, you know, and, 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 uh, and I'll be able, I, I'm, I'm able to do that. Uh, I'm able to understand some given percentage. But Ted Williams wrote a book called The Science of Hitting. And in the science of hitting, he's got a diagram, shows him at the plate, and he's got the strike zone divided into 77 squares, each the size of a baseball. And he says, if I only swing at pitches in my sweet zone, which he shows there, and he has what his batting average would be, which is 400. If he had to swing at low outside pitches, but still in the, in the strike zone, his average would be 230. He said the most important thing in hitting is waiting for the right pitch. Now, he was at a disadvantage because if the count was 0-2 or 1-2 or so on, even if that ball was down where he was only going to bat 230, he had to swing at it. In investing, there's no called strikes. People can throw Microsoft at me and, you know, you, you name it, any, any stock, General Motors, uh, and I don't have to swing. And nobody's going to call me out on called strikes. I only get a strike called if I swing at a pitch and miss. So I can wait there and look at thousands of companies day after day, and only when I see something I understand, and when I like the price at which it's selling, then if I swing, if I, if I hit it fine, if I miss it, it, it it's, it's, it's a strike. But it's an enormously advantageous game, and it's a terrible mistake to think you have to have an opinion on everything. You only have to have an opinion on a few things. Warren Buffett is really singing my song here. OG subscribers to this channel will have noticed that I've really only shared my strong opinions about two companies in the history of this channel in maybe 500 plus videos. Those companies of course being Tesla stock, I was trying to point out the gigantic opportunity there. Obviously Tesla stock is about 10x since I pointed that out, so yep, I was correct on that one. Again, I didn't talk about 400 companies, but the ones that I did talk about went okay. And of course, I also had a huge number of concerns about the countless red flags associated with Nikola Motor Corporation. And then of course we have Trevor Meltdown Milton leaving and blah, blah, blah. That one I also called correctly. Besides that, I pretty much haven't talked about any other companies, period, because generally speaking, I don't know what the f I'm talking about and I'd rather just stay quiet. Warren and I are absolutely on the same page here. By the way, there's nothing wrong with sharing your thoughts and opinions about many companies, but I'm just honest enough and self-aware enough to know that I don't know enough about practically anything else to even share my opinion. Others may. Others may be much smarter than me and much more capable of holding many ideas and assessing so many companies at a really thorough level than I am. That's totally fine. I'm not saying that if you've talked about 20 different companies on your YouTube channel, you're an idiot. Quite the opposite. You're probably brilliant, a genius, in fact. I'm just not smart enough to be able to do that, so I stay in my lane. In fact, I've told students if when they got out of school, they got a punch card with 20 punches on it, and that's all the investment decisions they got to make in their entire life, they would get very rich because they would think very hard about each one. And you don't need 20 right decisions to get very rich. You know, four or five will probably do it over time. I absolutely love this punch card analogy. And from personal experience, I can say Buffett is correct. I'm certainly not very wealthy or very rich, whatever he said. But 
one day that's almost inevitable from where we are today. If I just close my eyes and wake up in 20 years time, it's pretty much a done deal. Now, I'm not telling you this to be like, oh, look at me. I'm trying to point out I've only really made four key financial slash investment decisions in my career. And so far, they've set me up quite well. The first major one was investing in real estate in Sydney from the period of 2010 to 2014, then also picking up some real estate in Brisbane in 2015. That alone set up a really strong foundation. I was able to more than 10x my capital within a seven year period of time. And that gave me the financial foundation to have a little bit more freedom from what I could do with my life. If everything turns to shit, I can sell some of my real estate and I can sustain myself on that indefinitely at a very moderate lifestyle. So real estate was the very first hole I punched worked out okay. The second was moving from a career in web and graphic design, a little bit of web development as well, transitioning completely into a whole new career, a whole new industry, doing mortgage finance. That business, after three years of insane work and very little sleep, actually tracked my sleep during that period of time. I had a look before I recorded this video. My average sleep over that period of time, four hours and 51 minutes per night not recommended, almost killed myself, but had an amazing time, helped hundreds of people, and that business alone allowed me to achieve financial freedom. In my early 30s, I no longer needed to work. I had officially solved the money problem. I had enough recurring income plus savings and investments that that was enough. But in addition to that, while working in that business, I saw the opportunity in Tesla stock and went all in. Since 2016, beginning of the year, that's practically the only stock I've purchased. There's a couple of exceptions to the rule, but as a percent of my overall portfolio, not even worth mentioning. And today I am all in on Tesla stock. That was the third hole that I punched, also worked out okay. And the fourth hole I punched is this YouTube channel. Having solved the money problem, the next question for me was how can I have the biggest positive impact on the most number of people? Long story short, a few ayahuasca ceremonies deep in the jungles of Peru, and I found my answer. Share what I know about investing, finance, and point out some opportunities that I think that I've identified on YouTube. I can leverage my time and reach far more people than I would in an ordinary conventional one-on-one -on -one type of business. The unexpected but welcome side effect is this YouTube channel is also surprisingly generating considerable income, which I continue to invest in Tesla today with the ultimate long-term goal of deploying for capital intensive philanthropy in the following decades. In the past 11 years, more than a decade, I've punched just four holes. Two were time investments, business, career, etc., my finance business and this YouTube channel, and two, just two financial slash investment decisions, real estate in Australia and Tesla stock. These four decisions are the only times I've had such a high level of conviction that I've really swung for the fences. Now, I'm not always going to hit it out of the park, obviously. But the point that Warren Buffett was making about punching holes is that if you only punch a few holes, you're really going to spend the time and mental energy to really understand the opportunity. And only when you have an extremely high level of conviction, then do you even bother to swing at the pitch. So uh, I don't worry too much about the things I don't understand. If you understand some of these businesses that are coming along and can spot things on, if you, if you can spot on Amazon, for example, I mean, it's a tremendous accomplishment what Jeff Bezos has done. And I tip my hat to him, he's a wonderful businessman, he's a good guy too. But could I have anticipated that he would be the success and 10 others wouldn't be? I'm not good enough to do that. But I don't, fortunately I don't have to, you know, I, I don't have to form an opinion on, on Amazon. And I, do, I did form an opinion on the Bank of America, and I form an opinion on Coca-Cola. So those are the kind of decisions I like to make. And you may have an entirely different field of expertise than I would have, and probably much more up-to-date in terms of the kind of businesses that we're seeing evolve. And you can get very rich if you just understand a few of them and, and, and understand their future. So is it just me, or is Warren Buffett inadvertently describing Tesla? The question is about diversification. And I've got a dual answer to that. If you are not a professional investor, if, you're, if your goal is not to manage money in such a way as to get a significantly better return than the world, uh, then I believe in extreme diversification. I mean, if it, so I believe 98 or 99 percent, maybe more than 99 percent of people who invest uh, should extensively diversify and not trade. So in, that leads them to an index fund type of uh, decision with very low cost. Because all they're going to do is own a part of America. And they made a decision that only a part of America is worthwhile. I don't quarrel with that at all. That is the way they should approach it. Completely agree once again with Warren Buffett here. Diversification is for idiots. And 99% of people when it comes to investing are idiots. And their track record of losing money, gambling, FOMOing in and out of stocks, etc. proves this point. So I want to be clear. He's right. 
In 99% of cases, it makes sense for most investors to diversify. Given the fact that you're on YouTube trying to learn more about investing and get an upper hand, it's probably a pretty good tell that you're a little bit above average in terms of at least your investment intelligence. Unless they want to bring an intensity to the game to make a decision and start evaluating businesses. But once you're in the business of evaluating businesses and, and you decide that you're going to bring the effort and intensity and, uh, uh, and time involved to get that job done, then I think that diversification is a terrible mistake in, in, to any degree. And uh, I got asked that question when I was at SunTrust the other day. And uh, if you really know businesses, you probably shouldn't own more than six of them. I mean, if you can identify six wonderful businesses, that is all the diversification you need. And you're going to make a lot of money, and I will guarantee you that going into a seventh one is going to, rather than putting more money in your first one, it's got to be a terrible mistake. Very few people have gotten rich on their seventh best idea. You know, but a lot of people have gotten rich on their best idea. Just out of interest, let me know in the comments below how many different stocks are in your stock portfolio. And also, do you have an equal level of conviction for each of these different opportunities? In other words, how many holes have you punched in your stock investment card? Omission is way bigger than commission. There is big opportunities in life have to be seized. Uh, we don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. Once again, Warren Buffett is just singing my song. As I've mentioned, I don't find a huge amount of opportunities in life, but when I do, I'm all in. I really do swing for the fences. Tesla stock is a great example of that. Been swinging for the fences for five plus years, half a decade. This YouTube channel is another example. I have a goal of having a big positive impact on a lot of people in my lifetime, and I've never come across an opportunity like YouTube where I can leverage my time so effectively and reach tens of thousands of people from a single video. And I'm putting my money and my time where my mouth is. All in focus on this channel and all my cash still going into Tesla stock. As I've said repeatedly, I think over the next decade, Tesla is likely to reach a six plus trillion dollar market cap. In other words, a 10x from where we are today. Now I could be wrong, but I can tell you this for a fact. I will not regret having swung for the fences with both Tesla stock or this YouTube channel. And even to, to do it in a small scale is just as big a mistake almost as not doing it at all. I mean, you've really got to, you got to grab them when they come. And, because they, you're not going to get 500 great opportunities. You would be better off if when you got out of school here, you got a punch card with 20 punches on it. And every big financial, every financial decision you made, you used up a punch. You'd get very rich because you'd think through very hard each one. I mean, you went to a cocktail party and somebody talked about a company he didn't even understand what they did or couldn't pronounce the name, but they made some money last week and another one like it. You wouldn't buy it if you only had 20 punches on that card. There's a temptation to dabble, if, uh, particularly during bull markets. What a great place to wrap this video up. I think the moral of the story here is quite simple. Think more, invest less. When you do find an opportunity, really swing for the fences. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like up to $250 in free crypto bonuses with BlockFi, use the link in the description. You can also get two free stocks with Weeble and a free stock with Stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.